God is good. We used to sing a song in Missouri. It goes like this. If you're happy and you know it, say amen.
Brother Frenzy brought up that Abraham armed his servants. And God has armed his church. Consider the ant. You know, whether you've got a guide or not, whether you have a permanent sitting pastor or not, you have the Holy Ghost. Is there anybody in here that has the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Any tongue talkers in the room today? Yeah. Any one God apostolic lay my hand on you and feel God people in the house today? Hallelujah. Any people that know the name of Jesus today? First Corinthians 3.11 says, No other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's the only foundation. I don't want to build on the sand. I want to build on a rock. So, the ant provides for themselves. You need to spiritually provide for yourself. How many of you go to the grocery store and you stock up? You fill your cupboard with, with food goods so that you can prepare through the week. Anybody do that besides me? Hallelujah. You don't just go every day to the grocery store, but you go and you fill up some stores. Amen? Well, I happened to have filled up some stores while I was here in Athens. My wife and I always carry these little, uh, we get little journals. I got one here at the Christian Bookstore uh, in uh, Iowa. This one says faith on it. And we write down all these neat little stories of what God does. Isn't that amazing? Yes. <laughs> My wife has done this for the last 30 years, and she took several of those and put them all together, and there's a little book called The Elephant in the Room. Anybody ever heard of that? <laughs> That's where it came from. This is what God did. The next book that's going to come out is going to talk about how Brother Sharon had an ear infection in his ear. He was down here at this altar and he said, pray for me. And I prayed for him and he got up and he said, wow, it's gone. Hallelujah. 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 It's in my book. I also wrote down where Brother Sharon said I had an iPhone and I dropped it and the thing quit working. And I took it down to the technological geniuses, and they said, nope, it's not fixable. And he said, well, God, I can't afford it. He laid his hand on it, and the phone works. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. God stories. Amen. Miracles. God has done. Hallelujah. Where's Sister Ruth? Is Sister Ruth? I got a story in here about a little lady that received the Holy Ghost over at Sister Benu's house. Stand up, Sister Ruth. So everybody can see the miracle that God did. Isn't she beautiful? That's your sister. Hallelujah. A miracle that God did. Woo! We're having fun. Hallelujah. Where's Sister Myrna? Stand up, Sister Myrna. Sister Myrna had a dream that she saw this lady, and God sent her to find the lady, and there she sits, baptized in Jesus' name, going to the Holy Ghost. God's doing miracles! Hallelujah. Anybody got a miracle? Yes. Anybody had a God did something for me? Amen. You write it down. I'll tell you why. When you write it down, it helps you remember. Because the devil comes along and goes, oh God's this big bad boogie and he ain't done nothing for you for three months and you're getting here and the next thing you know your lips so long you're about tripping over it with your foot and you're, you're walking around. <laughs> oh, I ain't built the Holy Ghost in a bud. <laughs> now if you're blessed like I am, my wife goes, well you nimwit, you just felt God three days ago. He told you, yeah, you get out your book and you start reading. Yeah, God did. And I sit down and, yeah, he did do that. I remember when God, oh yeah, I remember when God did that. Ooh, I remember the move of God we had in Bible college. Man, didn't we have some fun. Wow, I'm telling you what, God was moving on them people. They were talking in tongues and they were praying. We had to get to the Spirit. Yes, hallelujah. Devil, you just shut up. You're a liar. I remember. God did good stuff. Amen. Amen. You know what happens when you start telling it? Angels draw near. Yes. And when angels draw near, the faith level goes, whoop. And when the faith level goes, whoop, you're ready for another miracle. I don't know about you, but I really like miracles. Turn with me to 
is Psalm 77. <coughs> People to Psalm also. Oh yeah, let's get into it. You need to see what the word of the Lord says. Amen? Amen. Amen. Look at verses 7 through 14. Even David got depressed. Anybody ever get depressed? Is the Lord going to cast off forever? Is he going to be favorable no more? Is his mercy gone forever? Does his promise fail forevermore? Oh God, have you forgotten to be gracious? Have you in anger shut up your tender mercies? Selah, now think about it. I said this is my weakness, my infirmity. But I will remember. Somebody said remember. remember. The years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the works. Somebody said the works. the works. I will remember the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. I will remember your wonders. Somebody said wonders. wonders. I will remember your wonders from of old. I will meditate, which means I will think about all your work. And I will talk of. Somebody said talk of. Talk of. His wonderful doing. Your way, oh God, is in the sanctuary. I happen to be standing in the crossroads sanctuary. Amen. Verse 14 says, you are the God that what? Wonders. Wonders. He does what? Wonders. Tell about it. Amen. I said tell about it. Amen. Thou hast declared your strength among the people. <coughs> Brother Sharon, does God get people out of prison? Yes. yes! Yes! Hallelujah. Is my God, old Daniel, able to deliver you? Yes! yes. Can the lions of the Greek company keep you bound? No! Hallelujah. God is good. Man, Jesus said in this world you will have trouble. Yes! The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Yes. But they don't stay. The afflictions of the righteous have to go when you pray. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Remember from your diary the miracles that God has done. You say, I don't have a diary, it's time to start today. Okay, grocery store sells these little spiral-bound notebooks. You can pick them up there, under an hour. Ah, uh, euro. I think. <laughs> There's my American talking again. Hallelujah. I don't do miracles. You don't do miracles. But God does miracles. Hallelujah. Only God does miracles. But here's the revelation. He partners with people. 1 yes. Corinthians 3. Turn your Bible there. Why do I say turn your Bible there? You see my Bible? It looks like a road map. It's a mess. I highlight it. I underline it. I write notes in it. But when I flip this thing open, it talks to me. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I got a little date in my margin. I remember when God told me that he did this. I got a little note down here. Remember the miracle that God did there. And when I flip my Bible open, it talks to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, there's something about a Bible, and then again, there's something about my Bible. You ever know what I'm talking about? You ever go to look for something and you pick up a Bible and you're like, no, give me my Bible. You, you, you know what I'm talking about? Amen. Give me my book. Show me where God showed me in my Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let's have a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Start at verse 6 and read through 9. Paul said, I have planted. 
Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, the guy that plants is nothing, the guy that waters nothing, but God gives the increase. Now he that plants and he that waters are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. But verse 9 is the one I want to get you to. Pay attention to verse 9. Because it says we are laborers together. Everybody said together. together. Say with God. with God. Say it again. Together. together. With, God. with God. Say it again. Together. together. With God. You are a laborer together with God. Amen. Amen. I like Brother Benji's uh, son who's named Emmanuel. Which one is that? Hold your hand up. You know what Emmanuel means? It means God with us. Amen. You know what your hope is today? God with us. <laughs> I'm telling you. If you have the Holy Ghost and you've spoken in tongues, God is with you. Yes. Yes. Now it might be sitting at the bottom of your bottle. Amen. The Apostle Paul told Timothy to stir up the gift that's in you. You got to stir it up. Yes. How many were talking in tongues walking down the sidewalk on the way to the church? Probably not many of you. <laughs> How many of you were talking in tongues when you were shaking hands in the back this morning? Probably not many of you. But did you notice how the atmosphere changed when you began to worship? When you began to lift up the Lord? When you began to tell of the wonderful works He did? When you began to lay hands on somebody and pray for them? Did you notice how the atmosphere changed? You stirred up the gift that was in you. We know it when we come to church. Why do we forget it when we're home? Oh, hallelujah. You know what? What if God doesn't heal somebody? Well, I'll tell you what. My wife and I met a lady on the metro. She had a real problem with her leg. We had Sister Benu with us, and she speaks Greek. Now, neither of us do. Kali Mare is about the end of it for us. <laughs> if I just oh, I do remember that one. <laughs> What is it? Sounds like a chocolate drink. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. That's my baby. <laughs> we reached down and we asked this lady, can we pray for you? She said, yeah. So we leaned over and I prayed for her. Prayed in tongues right there in the metro bus. Why not? What do I care what the rest of the Greeks think? Come on. Come on. Oh, he doesn't like me. Well, I'm not going to see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh, he thinks I look dumb. Well, wait till you get before the throne. We'll see who looks dumb. Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay, if you learned anything else, learn this. Next! So we reached down, we laid hands on her and prayed for her. I don't know if she got healed or not, but you know what? For absolutely sure, if I don't pray for her, she's not going to get healed. Right? But if I lay hands on, for one thing is for absolutely sure, there's a strong possibility Jesus might heal her. Yes. And even if he didn't heal her, my wife and I and Sister Benu all three have the Holy Ghost. So if we lean over and we pray for her, I'll guarantee you she felt the presence of God. Yes. And that might have been the first time she ever felt the Holy Ghost. She might be going down the rail going, who were them weird people? That's what I thought about y'all. The first time I came in here, I went, what is this? Man, I grew up in a Lutheran church. They had three little songs listed on that brick wall up there. By the way, when you tell somebody to go to the altar, I was looking for a big wood box with a cross on it and two candles and two offering plates. They said, go to the altar. I looked up front and I said, you don't have one. <laughs> Church talk. Church talk. 
But you know what? There's a difference between in here at Crossroads and out on the street. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I do what the pastor says when I'm here. But when I'm walking down the street, I'm looking for the Holy Ghost to tell me where my divine appointment is. Why am I spending time on this earth? I'm here for the kingdom of God and no other reason. Amen. Amen. I'm here to look for who is it I'm supposed to reach, Lord. If I, I'll tell you what, if the Holy Ghost isn't talking to me and I get on the tram and I talk to two people and this one frowns and this one smiles, this is the one I'm talking to. <laughs> that one's closed, this is open. Duh. It doesn't take rocket science to figure that out, does it? Right? You look for the one that smiles at you and you talk to them. Why? They might just get the Holy Ghost. They might just get salvation. Yes. They might just be able to make the rapture. Yes. Here's one right here. Hallelujah. Isn't she, isn't she lovely? Yes. This is your new sister. Look what God just did. Look what God just did. See Sister Ruth over there? Look what God did last month. Hallelujah. God's doing all kinds of neat stuff around here. He's healing people. He's filling people with the Holy Ghost. He's bringing salvation. He's reaching out and touching. And how's it happening? Somebody's stepping out. Somebody's talking. Somebody's reaching forth a hand. Now here is some news to you. When you start doing what the psalm said, and I start telling of his wonderful works, angels go, hey, somebody's praising God. Do you know when I talked about Brother Sharon getting his ear healed over here, do you know I'm telling the wonderful works of God? I didn't heal him, God healed him. So I'm telling the wonderful works of God. And when I tell the praises of God, angels draw near. And you can tell it too when they do. You can feel that presence, hallelujah. Ooh, and the hair on your arm starts to stand up a little bit. And when you reach forth your hand, that angel reaches forth his hand. Hallelujah. It's the truth. That might be the first time you ever heard it, but it's the truth. The other thing you need to realize is, remember, here in 1 Corinthians uh, 3, verse 6 and 7, somebody planted, somebody watered, and God gave a harvest. You got to realize what season you're in. When we reached down and prayed for that lady in the tram, I was planting. She didn't get the Holy Ghost that day. I'm not depressed. I did the will of God. Amen. I prayed. Bye. God, hey, you know what? I don't know where she is. I don't know her name, but I know who does know. He knows. Amen. He knows exactly where she is. She knows where she is today. And the next thing you know, she's going to be in care for a grocery store and some other sister's going to come over here and going to see her limping and go, hey, can I pray for you? And she's going to get... Somebody else did that once. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead. And they'll reach down and pray and talk in tongues a little bit and she'll get a touch of God and she'll go, wait a minute, who are you? Where do you go to church? Oh, we're just over there on... Make a lot of boom. Now, if you can pronounce that, you know that's God, right? Mikalakapulu. <laughs> Sounds like a pool game of some sort. I don't know. <laughs> God's got a great sense of humor, doesn't he? <laughs> you are in the world's bus stop. Every nationality of the world passes through Athens, Greece. You are set up for God's immense harvest. Do you not know who you are? You are the chosen, God-filled, Jesus name, supernatural people on God's city of Athens, walking about, looking for your divine appointment. <coughs> If God sends me to pray with somebody, that's my divine appointment. If God sends me to talk to somebody and hand them a tract, that's my divine appointment. Hallelujah. Maybe I'm only planting today. Maybe I got somebody that already had a witness once, and I'm watering today. There is a beautiful little couple. He's Scottish. 
She's Greek. They're going to come. His name's John. Her name's Katerina. They're going to come. I love them. They're wonderful people. But they have begun to turn. We went and had dinner with them the other day, and we talked. And I knew on the way there I wasn't feeling the, that rippling Holy Ghost. I thought, no, they're not going to get it today. I thought, I'm going to pray through the Holy Ghost sitting at their dining room table. That's what my wife and I do. We go to people's houses, we sit down, we have a dinner, and I say, hey, have you ever heard of the Holy Ghost speaking with tongues? They're like, what? Yeah. Let's pray a minute. If, they, if I see that tear, man, I know they're going to get it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isn't that right, brother? Hallelujah. That's how it's done. You see that? Look? I watch that face. That's why you pray with your eyes open. You're watching what God's doing over here. This is your little gas cage right here. Where's God at? Is he touching them? If I see that cheek, just go, uh, I'm like, that. Ah. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. If I see that lip, go, ah, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. I'm going to reach my hand out. I'm going to stay there until God does something. <laughs> Hallelujah. If they don't get the Holy Ghost, they're going to be good and soaking wet by the time I leave. I'm going to water, 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 water. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! Why not? Someday, some simple saint is going to pick up their Bible and actually believe it. Yes. Someday, one of you is going to go, Yeah, that probably works in Jesus' name. Someday, somebody's going to go, Should I pray with her? Oh, why not? Have you ever heard of the Holy Ghost speaking with tongues? Because God is good. Amen. And God is able. Amen. I partner with God. So if she gets touched, but she doesn't get what I'm, I'm, you know, we're always, we're always geared for. If they don't get the whole Acts 238 thing, then I failed. No, you didn't. If you stepped out and you prayed, you did the will of God. Amen. I don't give her the Holy Ghost. God does. I don't heal her. God does. But God ain't going to do anything if I don't step out and try. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody said I care enough to try. That's what I wanted to hear. 1 Corinthians 2. Back up one chapter. I want you to start at verse 9. And read through 14. Look at this. As it is written, eye has not seen, neither has ear heard, nor has it entered in the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Do you know that's you? That's every one of you sitting right here in Crossroads in Athens, Greece. You've got no idea what God has prepared for you. You don't even have an inkling. My wife came back from Greece. She'd met Brother Strickland, and she said, uh, he's asked us to go to Greece. You think it's will of God? Oh, I don't know. I'll pray about it. I'm flipping through the book of Acts, and I'm reading, and all of a sudden I come across where Paul spent three months in Athens, and the Holy Ghost goes, boom, and I go, oh. Yep, it's will of God. Hallelujah, we're going. So I come. I had no idea. Oh, man, I thought, you know, Greece. In America, if something's really confusing, we go, it's all Greek to me. <laughs> That's a common phrase in America, it's Greek to me. It means it's very confusing, I don't get it. I thought, I'm not going to be able to witness nobody here. Man, we prayed people through to the Holy Ghost here, we got all, you got no idea what God's got planned for you. You got no idea what God's, you've got to pick that foot up and take the step, and then God meets you. But you got to step first. As long as you sit back here, God's sitting over here going. <laughs> Step out there, child of God. Hallelujah. Somebody said yes. yes. Verse 10. Here you go. Here's your key. God has revealed these things to us by His Spirit. Because the Spirit searches all the things, the deep things of God, no man know, oh, what man knows the things of a man except for the spirit of a man which is in him? And just like that, 
The things of God knows no man, but the Spirit of God. Until you start operating in the Spirit, you're not going to know what the Spirit has for you. I have a car. I own a Toyota. I'm not driving it right now. It's sitting. Well, actually, actually, the pastor's driving it. I let him have it while I was here. It gets 40 miles a gallon. He loved it. Uh, he says, thank you very much. So anyway, but uh, if I have something and I'm not using it, what good is it? Do I have it? Yeah, I have it. I've got it. But I'm not using it. There is a blender back in my apartment right now. Do I have one? Yeah, I got one. Am I using it? No. So what good is it doing me right now? Zilch. Nothing. Zero. And that's okay for a blender, but it's not okay for a Holy Ghost filled saying to God. I got the Holy Ghost. Good. What are you doing with it? Come on. Oh, I got the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, yes. Yes. What am I doing with it? Oh, what am I doing with it? Oh. Everybody lift your right hand to God and say, what do you want me to do with it? Oh, Jesus, they just asked. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, verse 12. We have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, so that we don't know anything. We have the spirit so that we have to go read a book. We've been given the Spirit so that uh, we don't have any idea what's going on. Oh! You mean we've been given the Holy Ghost so that we might know? Mm. That must mean I have to plug it in. Now my wife has a really big cell phone. It's a smartphone, although her husband isn't real smart when it comes to technology. So, last night she said, plug in my phone. So I plugged in the phone. I get up this morning and the battery is low. <laughs> yeah. That's what she did. <laughs> you didn't plug it in. Yes, I did. I plugged it in here. It's plugged in there. It went beep, beep, beep. It's plugged in. But it wasn't making a good connection. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. It was plugged in. But it wasn't making contact. Sometimes we have the Holy Ghost, but we're not making contact. I might be connected to the power, but is it flowing? I said, is it flowing? You got to reach forth. You got to step out. You got to give God a chance. Hallelujah. You don't, no book floats out of heaven and lands in your lap and goes, this is how it's done. Okay? You have a Bible here that gives you truth. But the operation of the Spirit is known by the Spirit. It's known in the Spirit. And that means you're going to learn by experience. You know what that means? You're going to make a few mistakes. Now, did anybody ever learn to ride a bicycle? Anybody? Good. Did you ever fall off? Yes. Did you stay laying on the ground? Yes. No? How come? <laughs> did you get back on and try again? Why? Has anybody ever reached out and prayed for somebody and nothing happened? Did you quit? No. Good. You know enough to get back up and get back on the bicycle, then do the same thing in the Holy Ghost. 
get back up and get back on because I'll tell you what will happen. <laughs> I'll tell you what will happen. You're going to go home and you're going to go, God, I prayed for him and nothing happened. Now, why didn't that? And you'll start to learn that God will give you little signs that when you pray, who to pray for. You know, there's times when I just don't pray for somebody. They're not open. Next. I go to the next one. Poof. Next. Poof. Ooh. Ooh. There it is. Was it because I had wisdom? No, it's because I was feeling where the Spirit was at. Amen. I don't know everything. You don't know everything. Amen. We only know in part. We see in part. We prophesy in part. God knows everything. That means i got to trust the leading, and i got to start stepping, and i got to start trying. i got to start reaching. Hallelujah. You got, oh, you got nice warm hands today. <laughs> this is good. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, if your hands are cold, Carmel's got good warm hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to feel where the Spirit's moving. Amen. You don't know till you reach. You don't know till you try. You don't know till you pray. We are one body. And we have been given to the world to show them Jesus Christ. My last scripture, Psalm 78. <clears throat> Consider the end. The end doesn't have anybody leading it out there telling it how to get harvest, but it does it. Think maybe God tells the ant where to find the sugar? <laughs> Isn't it amazing how an ant can smell sugar? <laughs> you can live in the second story apartment, have the sugar in the glass jar, and the ant out on the street knows you've got it. <laughs> you know, there's got to be an ant angel going, follow the sidewalk up the stairs to the second floor apartment. And the ant's like, yeah. <laughs> Has anybody ever studied ants or bees? They have a little dance that they do. If an ant finds something, it does this little dance where it beats its antlers and it shoves its legs. And the next one knows what it's saying. And it follows it off and it, it's amazing. Bees land on a flower and they got this little buzz, 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 buzz. And the other one takes off and goes. And I'm like, yeah, they just talk to each other. This is crazy. They're so small they can't even possibly have a brain. Of course, God probably thinks that about us sometimes. <laughs> so, Psalm 78, 4, 5, 6, and 7. You need to listen to this. You got a highlighter. You'll notice that my Bible is highlighted. See that? You know why? It's really, 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 really important that you learn to write down what God has done. That you learn how to tell the stories. That you learn how to live in the miraculous. That you learn how to think in the spiritual. It's very important because my head is full of what I fill it with. If I let the devil put negative junk up there, that's what's up there. But if I fill my head with spiritual stuff, that's what's up there. If I keep myself in the company of believers that speak the things of the Spirit, that's what I'll have. You get what you follow after. Hallelujah. If you want beefsteak for dinner, don't go to Starbucks. They don't serve it there. <laughs> If you want to soar with eagles, don't roost with turkeys. <laughs> Amen? Oh, yeah. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying if you want to be a person of the supernatural and you want to operate in faith, don't handle with negative carnal naysayers. Yeah. Hang around people that pray. Hang around people that worship. Hang around people that believe. Hang around people that step out. Hang around somebody that prays. Hang around somebody that's trying to save somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The next thing you know, the angels of the Lord will pay attention 
to where you're spending your time and where you're spending your focus, and God will start to flip you a breadcrumb. And you'll go, oh, look at that. Wow, that's really good. And he goes, oh, you like that. Well, let me give you another one. And the next thing you know, you're going to be flying. Psalm 78, verse 4. We will not hide them from our children to come, showing the generation to come the praises of the Lord. Show the praises of the Lord. Show what God has done in your life. His strength, His wonderful works that He has done. He established a testimony in crossroads. He appointed a law in Athens. He commanded our fathers that we should make them known to our children so that the children coming up might know and tell them to their children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Do you know there used to be 50,000 apostolic Christians in Corinth? Do you know there's not one there today? They didn't tell it to their children. They didn't tell it to their children's children. There's something wrong when there used to be 50,000 Christians there, and there aren't any today. Do you know how many apostolics are in Ephesus today? None. Oh. Do you know how many are in Smyrna? One. Brother Smith. <laughs> there were three. My wife and I were there with us. Hallelujah. I walked where Polycarp walked, but why aren't there Christians there today? You got to walk in the Spirit, people. You got to tell it. You got to tell it to your children. You got to tell it. You got to tell it. You got to tell it. Amen. Why? Because verse 7 said that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God. So that they might set their heart right. Verse 11 said, they forgot his works and his wonders that he had shown them. Maybe you don't understand. I was raised on a farm in Iowa. I was a Lutheran. And my pastor caused a church split. But my great-granddad and great-uncle were the founding pastors of that church. There were Lutheran preachers in my family. And they spoke one service in Deutsch and one in English. Verstehen Sie mich? Gott ist die Liebe. Hallelujah. God is love. Oh, yeah. Praise them hairs. Praise the Lord. That's German. But i got to tell you something. I didn't have the Holy Ghost. And water was sprinkled on my head as an infant in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But I did not have this. And I caught my best friend with my girlfriend at a kegger one time, and I went out and I got stone drunk. I was so upset. And at 1 o'clock in the morning, I flew over the handlebars of my motorcycle at 85 miles an hour, and I rolled through the ditch. And the wind was knocked out of my lungs, and I laid there for about 10 minutes going. <laughs> and when I got my wind back, I sat up and I said, God, I know your people are not meant to live like I'm living. But if there's anything else in this life, more than what I know, you better tell me, because I want out. Life stinks. And I went home, and I said the same prayer in my driveway. And I got up the next day and I said the same thing in my dad's shed. Four days later, I'm with a friend. I'm up canoeing up a river. And there was some teenagers up canoeing up in front of us. They got to goofing around. You know how 15, 16 year old kids are. Boop, capsize their canoe. And the girl comes swimming back and I knew who she was. So I pulled her out of the water, put her in my boat. She said, hey, my church is having a music festival. Little of a liar, it was a revival. <laughs> Being a Lutheran, I wouldn't have known what that was anyway. So, but I went to her little music festival and I came into you people. Pentecostals. Man, I tell you what, you start out your first chorus at 55 kilometers per hour and then you shift gears. <laughs> oh. I love, wow, people stand up clapping their hands to the music. A little sawed-off evangelist playing the guitar saying, Key of G for Jesus. I started laughing. 
I thought this is the goofiest thing. Such unholy teaching should not be taught in Jesus' name. <laughs> and I went home and, and she said, oh, we're having it again this, uh, Tuesday night. And I said, good, I'm coming back. That's a circus. I, I, just, I thought that was hilarious. I come back that night and I was sitting right about where Sister um, uh, Myrna sitting. Only the whole pew was full. And it was about full, about like this. All of a sudden, a lady over here started speaking in some language I'd never heard before. And she was doing this number. And I thought, oh my God, is she having a heart attack? <laughs> I did! <laughs> Scared me spitless. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> All of a sudden, she said, Dennis, and she had my rapt attention. The only people in that place that knew my name was Desiree and her mother. Even Grandma and Grandpa didn't know my name. <laughs> Dennis, I heard your prayer in the ditch, the driveway, and your father's shed. Obey my word, and I'll manifest myself to you. And all of a sudden, this presence came down on me, and I'm like, oh, God. Because i got to confess to you, my intentions toward Desiree were not purely honorable. Can I just be honest? She was a cutie. I just lost my girlfriend, so I'm in the market, you know. And I said to her mother, I said, what am I supposed to do? And she said, go to the altar. And I looked up front and I said, you don't have one. I said, what do I do? She said, go down in front of the pulpit. I said, that I see. So I went down and I stood there and that preacher passed his hand over me and he, wow, something's in this guy. I went, this is the craziest bunch of people I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> All the way home, Mom opened her Bible. You need to be baptized in Jesus' name. I said, my mama told me if anybody teaches you something other than what you were taught, you make them show it to you in the Bible. Acts 2.38, Acts 8.17. Acts 10, 48, Acts 19, 3 through 6, Romans 6, 3 through 4. Oh my God, I got to get baptized in Jesus' name. <laughs> I got baptized in Jesus' name and God started calling me to preach. Come on, boy. Oh God. I don't give a speech in English class in front of six people. Come on. <laughs> you see where I am today, don't you? Man. I tell you, he's a God of miracles. He's a supernatural God. He's a God who meets you where you are. If you'll step out, he'll go with you. If you reach your hand, he'll reach with you. Hallelujah. You got to do something with what you got. I want to hear, back in Iowa, off of Facebook, I want to hear on my email, that Eddie laid hands on somebody and they got the Holy Ghost. All right. Hallelujah. 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 I want to hear that Chloe prayed her friend through at the high school. Hallelujah. <laughs> there was some tongue talking going on over there in the school building. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo! Why not? <laughs> Hallelujah. When you about ten good looking young men, bring them all in here. <laughs> Baptized in Jesus' name, full of the Holy Ghost, called to preach. Come on, Jesus. I'm looking for what Jesus is going to do. Hallelujah. Are you looking for what Jesus is going to do? Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, here you go. You are the body of Jesus Christ, are you not? How about our ushers? Come on. Let's have communion. Here's your altar call today. We're going to have communion. Come on. I don't know how Crossroads does this, so you're going to have to teach me. Come on. Who's in charge of this? While you're doing this today, just ask Jesus to break you and use you to feed the world and give them Holy Ghost. And I'll tell you something that's really neat about this is when you give it away, He fills you back up. The more you give away, the more He fills back up. 
So if I really want to get a lot, I give away everything I can get my hands on. I give away everything I've got. That's what Sister Krogan and I have tried to do while we're here. Give away everything we got. Why? So that God can fill me up. I can go home with a full suitcase, so I got more to give away next time. Yep. You got to give away what you've got. Yes. You got Holy Ghost. Yes. You got gifts of the Spirit. Give it out. Pray. Try. Reach. Amen. Amen. So Jesus said, This is my body. When his body was broken for us, right? Amen. Just like this. And guess what? We are the body of Christ today. He moves through the broken. What do you mean by broken? I mean the opposite of arrogant, the opposite of proud, humble. Amen. Take a look around you. It's God's family. Every nation on earth is here today, I think, just about. Indonesia, raise your hand. Anybody from Indonesia here today? Raise your hand. How about the Philippines? Anybody from the Philippines here today? Raise your hand. How about Kenya? Anybody from Kenya? Amen. How about Nigeria? Anybody from Nigeria? Hallelujah. All right. How about Sri Lanka? Anybody from Sri Lanka here today? Yeah, we got some of them. How about Pakistan? Anybody from Pakistan? Yes, sir, we got one. How about India? Anybody from India here today? How about Venezuela? Anybody from Venezuela here today? Hallelujah. How about Greece? Anybody from Greece here today? Praise God, we have a Greek. Hallelujah. Let's see. What, what did I miss? There's all kinds of stuff here today. UK. Anybody from the UK? America, hallelujah. That's UK number two, by the way. All right, here we are. God is good. Oh, my friend, we are to be broken, humble, submitted, parts one of another. I've said it many times, I'm saying it again. There's a boat. There's the remains of a boat not very far from here on a mountain in Turkey that tells me one family of eight got off that boat. Noah's Ark. Do you know we're all from that one family? Hello? We're all from that one family of eight, yes? I guess we're all cousins then, right? Hallelujah. So it's really stupid to hate any race because they're a different race, right? Because we all come from one family. So we got a witness to everybody out here. Oh, it's got quiet in here. I said we got a witness to everybody out here. It don't matter what nation they're from. It don't matter what language they speak. Hallelujah. When God fills them with the Holy Ghost, I just got a new brother and a new sister. Praise God. I like family. Anybody like family beside me? Praise God. Does everybody have uh, bread? You're working on it. What is this? Sister. Does anybody not have any? All right. Let's take some of that, shall we? In Jesus' name. Come on, Lord, we remember your sacrifice. We remember the cost. We remember the pain. We remember the brokenness. We remember, Lord God, your submission. You could have done anything else, but you didn't, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. We give you thanks and we give you praise today, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Take one. The Spirit is the blood of life. Amen. Amen. So, Father, as they take this right now, Lord, remind them, oh God, hallelujah, that your Spirit is what gave us life. Your blood. Your Spirit. 
Hallelujah. Amen? 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 Amen. How many is happy that God sacrificed so that you could have? Amen. Are you happy about that? Yes. Jesus, we thank you today. We thank you for this body. As the blood flows and cleanses the body of all impurities, Lord, we ask your blood to flow and cleanse us from all of our impurities. Lord, as one bread is broken to give the body nourishment and strength, Lord, we ask that you would use us to give your body nourishment and strength, that we would be a strength and a faith and a help to each other. Lord God, that we would be blended together, Lord, so that we do not maintain any individuality, but that we all look like one family. Hallelujah. That we are one entity reaching forth, O oh God, with the love of God, with the power of the Spirit, reaching forth into this world, Lord God, working salvation, working miracles, Lord, working faith, bringing revelation of Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lord, let us reach into the world, Lord God. We are your flesh. We are your bones, Lord God. Put on my shoe leather, Lord, and walk downtown. Use my hand, Lord God, to reach forth and pray. Let my mouth be filled with words of grace, words of your spirit, hallelujah. Let my heart be filled with the compassion of God, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, loosen in this house right now. Loose liberty in this house right now. Loose the gift of faith in this house right now. Loose the working of miracles, Lord God. Loose the gift of prophecy and word of knowledge, Lord God, right now. Loose the loose earning of spirits, Lord, in Jesus' name. Yada la bara sanda la bara shakara hata. Father in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name this day. Immediately following our service, there will be a short meeting for the music department in the pastor's office. Hallelujah. I want the rest of you today, I want you to consider every single person you meet as a potential. Look at them. If they're open to you, if they're smiling, if you can talk with them. Hallelujah. Even if they got one of them things in their ears when they're sitting on the subway, yakking away. Jesus, get them off that phone. Hallelujah. Oh, uh, yeah. Roll call. Hi. You know, is there a need in your life I can pray for? Everybody say that. Is there a need in your life I can pray for? Is there a need in your life I can pray for? Then you know what? You can ask that to anybody. Anybody. They'll say, yeah, whatever it is, just reach over and pray. Pray in Jesus' name. Pray to God before you start your day. That when I touch somebody and I pray, your spirit touches them. Yes. Hallelujah. And look out, Brother Strickland, you're going to have to buy more chairs in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Brother Benji, you want to dismiss us today in a word of prayer? Come, my brother. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name. We give you all the praise. Thank you for all that you've done today. Thank you for the ministries of your world. Thank you, Holy God, for the communion today. Thank you, Lord, as we gather together in your name. Thank you, Holy God.